Hey there folks, today we're going to be comparing Fuji colors to Leica colors. So for those of you not super familiar with this channel, my wife Danae and I have been shooting mostly Fuji now for a few years and it's been working really well for us. However, like many people, I suffer from a little bit of Leica lust and I've always had this feeling that I know it's irrational, but it's that little devilish whisper in the back of my head that you would be happier if you shot Leica. I'd probably just end up taking worse photos, honestly, if I shot Leica, but that itch is still there. So one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is to scratch that itch and answer that one question I've had, which is specifically, um, would I prefer the Leica color philosophy over the Fuji color philosophy if I could directly compare the two? And that's partly because it's one of the things you always hear people argue for when it comes to why they choose one system over another system. They say things like, oh Leica, no one does color like Leica, or Fuji, color science is the best, and stuff like that. Even if that's true, um, what about the ability to capture a moment with a more reliable autofocus in one in one system versus another it seems like that might be higher priority for the type of photography i do at least um just getting the photo never mind color <laughs> but i digress that is not the purpose of this video all i really want to do here today is to compare color and to that end we're going to do a blind test that means i'll be sharing with you photos that are extremely similar one shot on fuji one shot on a leica but I won't tell you which is which until after the blind test. You'll keep track of what you like better, and at the end of the video you'll be able to see which camera color philosophy is going to work best for you, or at least with the photos that we took. But for me, this is super selfish. I really want to scratch that Leica itch, and maybe after I finish this video I can stop being haunted by your evil temptations, Leica. Just leave me alone. I can't afford you. But first, I do want to thank our amazing friends at KEH.com for allowing me to borrow um, this, the Leica Q. I've had it for like a month and a half, and I appreciate their patience as I've tried to gather um, photos that will work for this video. We really love KEH, and not just because they let us borrow stuff. We actually buy and sell all of our used gear from KEH.com, and we go through a lot of it. We like how reliable they are um, with their gear assessment scoring, but also the 180-day return guarantee is helpful. Um, that's even better what Amazon will do. But we also like that they have cameras and lenses available from like every generation, film to modern. So anyway, we enjoy them, highly recommend them. So that'll be representing Team Leica, the Leica Q here. And for the Fuji, in the Fuji corner, we have our old faithful X-T3. This little dude has been with us for, um, well, we've got it since they first came out. And we shoot it with it nearly daily. It's been a workhorse and we, we sure do love it. So, But we will be comparing these two. Um, the price point of these two is a little bit more on par than one of the more expensive Leica M's, so I thought that might be more appropriate for our purposes. So as I said, we'll be sharing a bunch of photos with you, each taken with one of these cameras. We'll show you those side by side, but really this is going to be um, two color comparisons in one. We're first going to show you the colors that we get um, with RAW in the RAW format, and then we'll do the same thing with photos taken in the JPEG format. Um, I'm shooting with RAW and JPEG on both of these. Now there's a very important reason why we're doing that, and that is because that different people have different workflows and want different things out of cameras. I learned this from our last color test when I compared Sony and Fuji color philosophy. A lot of Fuji photographers shoot with JPEG. A lot of photographers, myself included, really love the JPEG output from Fuji devices in particular. I usually shoot JPEG and RAW, and often I will use just the RAW with only minor tweaking to the hues and curves. Sometimes if I really mess up exposure though, it's nice to have that RAW file. But the reason I do that is that like many others, it's that I absolutely love the Fuji film profiles. I used to spend an exorbitant amount of time on RAW files, building a massive library of custom Lightroom presets, trying to find those perfect sets of presets that I would love. But the more experienced I've gotten, the more I've just kind of disliked my own color philosophies that I had like a year ago, and every every year I go through these phases. And I, I recognize more and more that I, I really trust what Fuji is doing with color um, on the JPEG side. So for photographers like me who aren't too cool for JPEG, I will be doing a JPEG color comparison after the RAW comparison. But of course, there's no reason why you couldn't do both if that interests you. 
For the raw test, I will be showing you four similar identical images at a time. Two of the images will be raw files in Lightroom, and then the other two will be um, raw output from Capture One, because I know a lot of you, especially Fuji shooters, have been moving to Capture One instead of Lightroom. The other thing to keep in mind is that the only thing I've done as far as tweaking in post is to mess with the exposure to ensure as close as possible exposure value for these photos because sometimes it's just a little off. For white balance though, I just shot everything in daylight balance just to keep it simple and ensure I didn't screw up this comparison by shooting with a different white balance setting. A couple other things to note, I did use different Fuji lenses in the course of taking the Fuji version of the shots. Some of that was due to expedience. It was just whatever lens I had that had a closest to 28 millimeter focal length at the time is what I used. Of course, we know that lenses have effect on the color, the output of the color, but I think that's okay. Uh, most people who shoot, shoot Fuji will be using different lenses anyway, unless you're using an X100 series camera. The Leica Q, of course, has a fixed 28 millimeter lens. The other thing I'd recommend is not getting too focused on analyzing quality of bokeh or the field of view to try to figure out which camera took which shot. While I may have had a, a slightly different equivalent depth of field in many of the shots and the field of view might be slightly off, it sort of defeats the purpose for you to try to reverse engineer that. I mean, if that makes you happy, go ahead, but I think it'd be more interesting to play along and just focus on color and which color you like more. As for the second part um, with those JPEG comparisons, for those, I will just show three images. I'll show you the Leica shot with standard mode um, without any tweakings to the JPEG in camera. And then I'll be showing you two different Fuji shots, one which is shot with classic Chrome and the other which was shot in Provia standard. I realize that there are several film profiles I could have used, but I just chose the two that I like the most for this because I'm selfish. Sorry for Velvia, Astia, and Proneg shooters, um, but I didn't, I didn't do anything with those. Finally, we won't be doing a comparison with black and white in this video, though if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. Um, maybe I'll try a Leica black and white test versus Fuji Acros profile test. Maybe if there's enough demand for that, we could convince KEH to let me borrow a Leica monochrome type 246. That would be awesome. But until then, that's enough chit chat. On with a blind test.
All right, welcome back. It's time for the big reveal. Here are the identities of the letters from both the RAW and the JPEG tests. I'm really curious to know how you rated them. Did it meet with your expectations? Were you surprised at all? I'd love to hear about it in the comments if you wouldn't mind. When I did a similar, albeit simpler, comparison between Sony and Fuji a couple years ago, I was super surprised how many people admitted that comparing RAW was a lot closer in those two systems than they thought it would be. I've always heard so many Fuji shooters claim that Sony colors suck and that Fuji is far superior, but that study really did show that when shooting raw, those differences were extremely hard to tell for most people, and there wasn't really a landslide preference one way or the other. And I don't wonder if that will be, it will be probably different analyzing JPEG though. But I tend to think that people make a bigger deal out of color science than what is warranted. When it comes to RAW, especially, I mean, sure, at one time, Sony produced some serious yellow skin tones, but at about the release of the A9, they updated their color science, and it's a lot more closely aligned with Canon now. And in general, you'll certainly get cooler tones from Fuji than with Canon, Sony, and from this exercise, I'd say also Leica. But really, the differences between the raw output is small enough that I do think that most people, for most people, it's kind of arbitrary. The idea of color science really shouldn't factor into a camera purchasing decision, if you ask me. You'll be able to pretty much do whatever you want to do color-wise with, with any... Uh, raw file from any camera. But for me, I really can say that I, I am in love with the way that Fuji outputs JPEGs in classic Chrome especially. I like to look at color the way um, photographers used to, where they chose a color film stock that most spoke to them, which most represented the way they wanted to be represented in their art. Their options were more limited back then, but what it gave them was consistency. And that's what I love about using just one or two Fuji profiles in my own work now. It helps me be more consistent and allows me to focus less on trying to save an image that's not great in post and focus more on getting it right in camera first. I also spend less time tweaking color and then looking back at a year later and wondering what I was thinking. Um, it helps to control the tendency to chase fads. I feel like there's a little bit more timelessness for shooting um, in a, in a Fuji profile like film was. But these are just my opinions and philosophies on color. If you disagree, that's totally fine. Do what works for you and do the thing that gives you personal expression to the way you see the world. If we all produce the exact same sort of images, the world would be pretty boring. So there is unlimited room for opinions here. And I would encourage you to explore and you'll eventually find your way. But that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful in some way. Remember, kindness before cameras, and we'll talk to you again soon.